Release the Kraken! Good evening fellow game designers, Ron here with Lame Duck Studios. In this tutorial we're going to go ahead and set up this door. Now you can see I have a few doors in here. Um, I got a little bit door happy and actually forgot about setting this one up so I'm kind of backpedaling and uh, setting this up. So if you follow the tutorial to make the door, we made uh, this door in Maya and transferred it. And now we're just going to go ahead and set it up. Go ahead and grab him. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to go in and make an actor off of my content. Add new. We'll do an actor class. Uh, so add new blueprint. Sorry, actor class. Getting a little ahead of myself. We'll call this a basic door. Basic door. I'm going to add this to my scene. Open up the door. Let's go ahead and add our static mesh. So um, static mesh. I'll call that door. And we are going to keep the scene root, and you'll see why in just a second. Uh, over here, let's go ahead and add in our static mesh door. And there it is with our widget in the correct location, because we set that up in Maya, if you remember. We also need a collider. Now, there's a thousand different ways of doing things in programming, but um, we're going to keep it simple, just do a basic boundary box. So I'll say box collision. And then I'm going to center this up and scale it to an appropriate size. You don't want it to be too big, but it should be big enough so that the door doesn't whack the player. So good enough that way, maybe tall enough. And you don't want it so that the player can access the door outside the boundary. Like maybe there, maybe there's like a staircase or a wall here. You don't want him to actually grab the door from a weird side. But that should be good enough. And let's go to our event graph. Uh, we don't need the tick, we won't need the begin play, but we will use this overlap. And in terms of keeping things uh, quite simple, we're just going to use a timeline. So drag off from here, let's say timeline, and we'll add a timeline. We'll call that door timeline. Set this up over here, let's open that. We're going to add a float track, and then I'm going to go ahead and name this. I'll call this door rotation. And in here, you can go ahead and right click. You can add a key. You can also hold shift and click to add a key. But we need two keys. On the first one, I'm going to go ahead and set the time index to zero. Whoops, not three, zero. And then the value I'll do also as zero. Because when we start, we haven't done anything yet, so it's fine. And then the next one for the time index, this is how long it's going to take for your door to open. I'm just going to do one second. And then for the value, I'm going to have that as one. So one is going to be 100%. So I'll go ahead and click in here and just frame up by pressing F. And there's our very linear uh, track here. Back to our graph. Let's go ahead and do an update. And off the update, we'll do uh, set actor. Uh, so let's do a set relative, set relative um, rotation. And off of here, I'm going to do my door, set relative rotation for the door. It should come in with a reference to the door static mesh, which is what we need. Okay. And then off of that, we have this rotator value, but over here we have a float value. So we need to make our starting rotation and our end rotation. So go ahead and add a variable. I'm going to call this uh, start rotation change that to a rotator type and then I'll make another one I'll call this end rotation and on the end rotation I'm going to poke the eyeball here that's going to make it editable you can also go over and check instance editable over here that way we can edit it and in, um, in the main editor as well I'll drag both of those in so get and get and then off of our door rotation from here we're going to do a lerp rotator so lerp LERP, so that's linear interpolate, and then we want the rotator type. And very simple, we'll plug A into A and B into B. Uh, now this uh, shortest path means that it'll try to rotate along the shortest path. So for example, you have a rotation of 360 degrees, right? So 270 is actually closer to zero than it would be to count all the way down from 270 to zero. You can see what I'm saying? It'll take the shortest of those two paths, and it'll complete. So if you want that, then you're welcome to hit that. I don't want that, so I'm going to leave that open. And then from here, just plug it into my rotator. 
And that's pretty much it, uh, compile. And we'll jump back out into the world here. Here is my uh, door setup. And I do need to set a rotation value. So I'm going to go ahead and just set like 90. That'll give me a pretty simple door. Play. And if I walk up to the door boundary, I should see the door swing open. Now the door does not close yet. We haven't told it to. So let's go ahead and just repeat that process. I'm going to go back in. And then to get this to go the other way, we're going to take an end overlap. So we have a begin overlap here. Let's do a uh, end overlap. I'm going to grab this on actor, so event uh, actor end. There we go. One of these days I'll learn how to read. And I'll go ahead and plug this into the reverse. And I'll hit compile. So now when we step out of the boundary, the door should close. So I'll walk up to it. Door swings open. It hit me. <laughs> But there we go, the door hits, and then if I walk away, it should close. Now, another thing you're going to end up seeing, and, uh, and you can't quite see it here, but let's do this. Let's go in, and another thing that's actually happening is the overlap boundary is moving with the door. So our boundary is actually a child of the door, and when the door moves, the boundary goes with it. So is select the boundary box, and come down to where it says rendering, and where it says hidden in game. Let's go ahead and uncheck that. Compile. So you can see it when we play. So there's the boundary, and if I step in it, you can see it moves away from the player, right? And if I step on and I exit, it's gonna close. Now there is a bit of a hiccup. So you can see as I step in, it waits, and then give it a few seconds, it'll close. So I step in, step out, that's pretty quick, right? If I step in here, let it close all the way, step out. Now it waits. Now it waits because when it gets to the end of the timeline, it actually uh, plays the entire thing through again before it reverses. So let's go back in and solve that. So open up the timeline. Uh, we'll just say use last keyframe. So whenever it's, wherever it stops from is wherever it's going to play from. Okay. And then for the overlap issue, if you don't want the boundary box to move with the object, just grab that. And we'll move this off. We'll say drop here to detach from door. So now this and this, they're both children of the scene root. Okay. Compile that just in case. So now when we do this, the door will swing, but the boundary box will not. And then once I go through and exit, the boundary, it should close. Right? And if I go this way, it should open. And this way, it should close. Okay. Now you could make a sizable box that is on either side, and then, you know, work out the logic from there, that's fine. Uh, one other thing I want to show you is the reason we kept um, the widget, so the or the uh, default scene root. So if we have the scene root here, and I rotate my door, you can see uh, the rotation here is minus 100, but that's relative to the scene root. So this 90 is actually relative to the door's uh, rotation. So that will always update relative to the door. See that? But if I make the door the root, it's going to be a pain. So if I go in and I make the door its own root, and drag that up, we're going to get two problems. One, the boundary box suddenly becomes a child of the door again, which we don't want. At least in this case, we don't want that. And whenever I try to open the door, say it snapped to 90, it didn't do um, quite what we wanted. It's always going to be stuck to 90. No matter how far I rotate this, the value is going to try to update to 90 and then do that. Um, so we do want to keep that scene root. So I'm just going to come in here and do a control Z a couple times, so I'll pass back in. All right. And with that, that is a very simple way of setting up a door. Now in the later tutorials that are coming out, um, it should be coming out in a couple weeks here, is uh, accessing doors from buttons. So these are just sliders, but I can hit the button and open the door. Um, and do various things. So, And this one is uh, you just walk up and it works. Also the nice thing about making a blueprint out of the door is we can set these up uh, multiple instances of it and it doesn't matter you know where they're at relative to themselves they'll always perform. So I can make a door this way, I can make a door you know that way. We'll make pretend like we're in a hallway right? I can say, oh, I need to get through here, I'll open this door. And then, oh, I gotta go down this hall, I'll open this door. 
right? They're all independent of each other. So that's kind of cool. All right, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. And uh, if you need a, you know, want to comment for a future video or whatnot, uh, leave it down below. And I shall see you in the next one.